Folks were asking about a before and after forest mulching. So this is before and this is after. I'm Justin Hitt from Prosperity Homestead. So I took the truck and I drove around the block here. Uh, we have forest mulching done on this particular site to go from scrub pines to accessible for a truck and a trailer. Now I have a travel trailer and what the objective is with this particular piece of property is that while people are working on it and developing it, the travel trailer would park out here. And I needed to be able to get the travel trailer around this space on as level ground as possible. So we started with this kind of forest and I'm not gonna walk around the whole thing. I got some work to do today. But again, people are asking about the before and after. Before, it was woods that were difficult to move through. And if you were hunting this, you know, deer will hop right through here, they don't really care. But you would be full of ticks, uh, eating branches, and ultimately not being able to get around as easy as you can out here. Now, again, I know this forest mulching looks sloppy, and even the forest mulcher was a little concerned about how, how messy it was because of all these big chunks laying everywhere. They really can shred this down to being like a park surface, being like this right here. Um, but I didn't want that because we're going to camp out here and I want all this firewood available to me without having to cut down other trees. And I also wanted him to work as quickly as possible to cover as much ground as possible because this loop is one and a half acres. Now it's actually three acres total and I bisected the property into uh, two paddocks of one and a half acre each. The bisection is on a level contour and I wanted him to outline everything so we outlined everything and then clear the majority of the front half starting from the outside creating at least a 21 foot wide path. Now again we've talked about this before you need a 21 foot wide path I, I'm being I'm being hailed by the horse flies you need a 21 foot wide path for that forest uh, well, that forest mulcher can cut the path, and I need a 21 foot wide path in order to bring in a well truck, in order to, uh, to, to post a well in here. So, what happens by outlying the area is that the home site is likely going to be where these trees remain. Now, that's fine. When we're ready to build a house, we can come in here with a bulldozer and bulldoze it all out, or we could forest mulch if the house is going to be delayed to open up additional space. But I've got this 21 foot wide path all the way around, uh, actually all the way around the front acre and a half and only down one side of the second acre and a half. Now what's likely going to happen is an agricultural well is going to go in first because there's going to be some off grid or experimental housing here uh, in advance where the farm, a farm hand is going to basically live. So the farm hand is going to stay here, got to take care of goats got to get the chickens started, get the rabbits started, and start establishing this area. So again, all this open space here becomes salvage for firewood. So all this large material on the ground here is going to get picked up. It's going to get cut into firewood. Some of this material is going to become poles to make the primitive house housing. It's actually, I'm learning timber framing. So we're going to build a couple timber frame houses on skids so they can be moved around the property. And ultimately, I need to be able to have somebody pull in their trailer or the trailer that I've got and live. So this is before and this is after. Now again, I encourage you to get with some friends, go through the videos. If you've got a piece of property, you need three to five people, sit down, go through the videos. And these three to five people could be your family. But understand, remember I told you about what's in front of me right now is primarily pine. That tells me the expression of the soil there. What's behind me is primarily hardwoods, which tells me a different expression of that soil. I left the hardwood strip for privacy and because we just don't need that much extra space cleared. I left any big trees and then we have the pines that remain. Now, if I need four inch diameter poles or six inch diameter poles to build a, pole, to build a timber frame, I can actually harvest those out of this area on the outside edges, which would thin out the area even more. Now again, I remember I said we we're going to be running goats. I had them cut through the middle of this particular paddock, so we call them paddocks. So it's a three acre paddock, 
cut in half into two one and a half acres. The front acre is cleared more because that's the camping area. But as you can see by these trails and paths, we can get temporary fencing down or we can put T posts in and we can have the goats running under the woodland, clearing and thinning out those woods. Now we're gonna need a person here in order to manage that. And, and by the way, some of your timber will get damaged. See, this one got kind of hit here, it's okay. I'm not that concerned about it because dropping this tree into this clearing, nothing wrong with that. And actually, if we got a larger equipment, I would drop this tree into those woods. Now, why would I drop the tree into the woods? I don't need to drop the tree, but if it's damaged, I can drop it and, and uh, give it to a friend with a sawmill and turn it in some boards for these houses. But here's the thing. If I drop, <laughs> I don't know if you can hear those horse flies on the, on the, camera, uh, on the camera, but they're all swarming my head. Um, if I drop this tree into the woods, it'll create a clearing. And if it's, we got equipment big enough to drag it out, we'd probably drop it into these woods and then drag it up the hill here to get it out of here. The big 21 foot wide paths make it easy to get equipment in, but dropping that tree into the woods would bust up those woods and, and clear it out even more. So I would go in there and cut out all my four, four inch diameter and greater pines, branch them, drag them out, strip them, get them dried out, use them for, for uh, building material drop those trees in that drop that tree into those woods and it would smash down a lot of stuff that's in those woods and start getting those woods ready to clear out again we're not coming in here with a bulldozer bulldozing everything exposing the soil and then wandering off and letting it dry out letting it get the sun uh, to mess it up we're creating strips and paddocks and sections in order to get useful value out of these pieces we can always come in here and deer hunt and we can all we can always come in here and camp now this mulch is flammable you know you don't want to be starting a bonfire back here you, you do have to have some fire safety but see this nice big open area can easily set up some tents some hammocks and the few little trees that are left pick up some of this wood scrap as it dries out and use it up for firewood and ultimately be in the money when it comes to valuable use of the property before we've built a house. Now I did drive the truck back here to see what my route would be when I'm pulling a trailer and I will need to take up a lot of these these logs and sticks before I can bring a truck through here regularly. The four-wheel drive handles it just fine but you know if I'm gonna pull a trailer I don't want a trailer to slip on something like this and turn over. But I have a nice clean path all the way around that was the primary objective. If we have a pump truck coming here, uh, actually behind this section of woods is another 21 foot wide trail that goes along the property line. If we have a pump truck coming here, they'll just gonna turn a different direction when they come out the entrance. But again, we still have privacy. We still have biomass on the ground. Look at this biomass. This biomass is blanketing the soil, protecting that soil so that we keep the biology. What I'm also gonna do as there's a, a, a Sean Penn is a, a, a I think he's French and he actually would mound the wood chips in order to create heat for hot water we might do some of that but we also are going to make some rafts and uh, basically mound these materials up inoculate them with oyster mushrooms and then we're gonna have some mushroom inputs now you can see they dropped this tree and just left it on the side which again is what I want because it's greater than four inches in diameter and then we can strip the bark off of that get it dried out so we're, we're immediately getting resource value we're immediately getting access to the land we're immediately getting so many things without damaging or scarring the land itself that is why this particular approach is so valuable now if it wasn't this is 2022 if the economy wasn't going to shit if we didn't have the inflation and building <clears throat> building prices were lower like they were two years ago then maybe the whole <clears throat> damn I didn't eat one of the, <clears throat> I didn't eat one of those horse flies but I picked up some dust anyway so if we could, if the host home prices were better perhaps we'd have cleared the whole area but they're not I don't need a place to live immediately I got a place to live I can work with the land I can extract 
uh, entertainment and experiential value out of it. I can amplify my lifestyle and improve uh, some uh, recreational activities, and I can do so without harming the land. Forest mulching gives me the opportunity to let this land sit if I don't get something to, on it right away. Now again, I'm gonna be able to easily bring a camper back here. And since I can't back up a camper as well as I should, and, and I'll have to get some practice on it, I'll actually be able to pull through, through this entire site and boondock out here. Another thing that we can do, of course, is primitive camping. And now we have multiple areas to, primitive, to do primitive camping. So again, this is why I tell you, you don't wanna get the cheapest land because it's cheap. You wanna get the land that has the highest value for your purpose. If you're gonna build a homestead and you, you need flat level areas here and there. So this is kind of a, a hill. And so this was our selected home site. But back in the woods there, there's ditches and trenches and, and all kinds of stuff. The, the, eleva the elevation from the highest part of this property to the lowest part of the property is only 40 feet. Uh, so we don't have that, you know, it's not like we have big deep gullies or anything, but we have areas that are more suited for housing and other areas that are more suited for grazing. So you wanna look at these things. Before you buy the piece of property, you wanna be thinking about what is it you're gonna do with the property and start putting together a written plan. I know you guys are attending homestead conferences to take classes and you're watching videos online and I want you to get off the computer, and get a pad of paper, and start outlining your plan. Do you want a homestead? Do you want a small farm? If you're gonna run a small farm and have a market garden that you're gonna be selling product to the public, do you have good farmers markets nearby? Do you have a, a population of affluent customers who would buy direct from a community sponsored agriculture? Or are you gonna start on the land with a homestead, get self-sufficient and then sell your surplus? So you're doing more of a, a sustain, uh, uh, substance farming. Now there's nothing wrong with substance farming. I know in a lot of cultures, they say, oh, you know, those are the poor people. Well, there's nothing wrong with building a small house that can be expanded over time, growing all your own food, and especially when the economy starts to tank, you'll be able to eat. You'll be able to make the payments on the land. You'll be able to pay for the home up front. You'll be able to build it as you go. Now, I don't always recommend you building your own home because sometimes your time value is greater working for somebody else or working in town. Again, I don't know your situation. If you ask your questions in the, in the comments below or you uh, invest in a consultation, we can talk specifically about your situation. But my point being is that the forest mulching system allows me to get in this land quick. It allows me to do it without destroying the land. And then whether I'm making biochar with the slash, now again, they want to clean it up much nicer than this. I said, nope. Just keep that forest mulcher going. I need 21 foot wide paths in these areas at a minimum. And I need you to outline this area. And ultimately I'm okay with all this slash on the ground because we're gonna turn it into other resources. Uh, and they're like, they're fine with it. But again, they were able to cover a massive amount of land. Now, a lot of folks have been asking, how much does this cost? Well, I'll tell you, it depends on the terrain. It depends on the forest density. Now you can see somebody else's land back there. They slashed that thing. It looks, looks like garbage. Um, but here, here we go. The cost is dependent on the site, the location, the density of, of uh, forest. And we're going to cut through here in the middle. Uh, see, it's a, it's a loop. My truck's over there. Um, it really depends on a lot of factors, but they're usually going to give you a day rate. Okay, don't pay by the hour. They're going to give you a day rate. They're going to bring in the equipment. They're going to give you a good, honest eight hours. Now, seven of those hours is going to be running the equipment. And then they have about an hour of necessary maintenance. If that equipment's not functioning well for the purpose, then it will not cut and do what it needs to do. So they have to stop it every so often, inspect the materials. You know, you don't want a, a tube going or something like that uh, and hydro a leak hydraulic fluid and then to jam up the equipment. Now let me show you something interesting about how well this equipment works. Now he busted a path through here and notice he went around that tree. In fact, he went around a lot of larger trees. He did cut down a few, he has to, you know, he can't save them all. Um, but look how this path came through. So even if you're just gonna put trails on your property, 
forest mulching is an excellent way to go. Now, what's interesting about this, one thing I just noticed coming in here, that is a multi-trunked tree. There's another multi-trunked tree right here. And then several other multi-trunked trees here and over here. So deciduous trees, trees that lose their leaves in the winter, uh, they can be uh, coppiced off at the ground and then they will come back uh, with multiple trunks. If you allow the multiple trunks to grow out, you're gonna get wood stock like that, which is fine for me. There's three poles right there. If I turn around here, there's three poles right here. Three, yeah, maybe, maybe I can get a fourth pole out of that one. Um, but that tells me that this land, by subtracting the age of the trees, was actually cleared. And when they cleared it, they timbered it because it was cut off at the ground. So they, they cut the tree down and then they cut it off at the ground so it's kind of level. They could have been running cattle here, uh, but ultimately it was cut down. And there's a wild cherry right there that got cut. But again, most of this is, is going to be is pine. And it's, you know, it just tells me a little bit about the soil. But you can see how dense this is, how, how difficult it is to walk through. But with the forest mulching, and I know I'm pumping the forest mulcher, uh, and if you're in my area, uh, I can recommend some people that can help you out with that. But you can see how dense the woods are and how difficult it is to, to move through those woods. But afterwards, I've got a park-like trail. Now, you can go in by hand and thin these out. You can also, if you have animals, run animals through here. Goats would clear these woods out over a couple months. Now, again, with goats, you need fencing. With a forest mulcher, you just need cash. <laughs> and ultimately, they come out. But we'll, we'll cut little trails in here uh, as we go. There's a, there's a maple tree right there. Um, you know, we'll thin out the, uh, the larger uh, pines, of course, to do our timber framing. I'm fascinated by the Korean-style timber framing, and I'd like to build a couple small buildings to learn how that works. Um, it, we, just, we just gain instant access. We drop this tree. This is a beautiful one, one right here. We drop this tree right here. I strip the bark off of it here. We're going to get a, a hand uh, electric planer and just sh strip the bark, uh, either that with a draw or with a draw knife. Drop it on the ground. It'll feed the soil. As you can see here, we got plenty of mulch here feeding the soil. And then I am in abundance. If I sh just in, in just strip this out with with a bulldozer, yes, it would be cleared. Yes, they could level the site. But then if the site sits for a year or sits for two years, it's just gonna grow this scrub brush up again. I'd much rather be feeding the soil so that when they scrape this topsoil off at the, final at the final point which we build, it is a higher value and quality of topsoil and I can use it for the next project, which would be a garden, which would be a growing space and so on. As it is right now, with a fence around this area, we could have chickens in here, we could have goats in here, and later when they move off, we could have hogs in. A, go, a, a hog will eat your chickens if they, if they run out of other food to eat. So you put a temporary fence down the middle, you run the goats on the front half, you run some chickens in here in the front half, you got an electric fence though to keep, to keep the raccoons out, and then you move them across to the back half, and then I rotate them through these different clusters of trees, which then thins out the woods, provides food and shelter for the animals, and then ultimately turns the underbrush into meat. See, does this make sense to you? So again, you clear cut, it seems like you're moving fast. It might even be cheap because folks will come in with that bulldozer and they just love plowing stuff over, but you lose all of this forest product, which includes these smaller pines, and such. Now there could be, let's say, let's say this isn't the only property you've got and you've got 10 or 15 of these properties out there because you're investing in farmland or you've got 50, 100 acres. These types of patches would allow you to thin out and then actually get pine timber over time. So you would come in here and, uh, and you might, you, it depends, there's a lot of ways of doing it, but you might clear all the small trees or you might take out all the big trees, but ultimately what you would be doing is thinning this out so that these trees can get, get their growth on. And when they get their growth on, then they make better timber, they make better forestry product. So here's some resources for you to get you started quickly. There's 
likely a forestry extension or a forestry office in your area. You want to find good, high quality foresters and you want somebody who when they come out, they're going to be honest with you about, hey, these trees are not mature enough or how much you're going to get per acre or with some rough estimates or what it's going to cost to do the work. You want to look at a variety of different kinds of approaches on paper before you choose one. So again, there are times where just sending in a bulldozer might be the right thing to do. But there are other times where even just going through here and cutting for firewood is the right thing to do. See, by hand, you can come in here and cut firewood. Now I got a whole program on how to make money with your land. But with this access points that I've got here, I can come in here and cut firewood and get a couple cords of firewood out of this thing, turn that into money, and then hire the right people to do the job. See, I know a lot of you guys are saying, well, how expensive is it? Well, that's the wrong attitude. It's an investment, and we should be asking, where's the yield? What's the yield? So again, let me summarize before we wrap this up, Give you because we're giving you a little bit before and after. Again, we can go into a, a webinar or a live call if you want and talk specifics, but I've invested in forest mulching because I want the yield of quality soil. I invested in forest mulching because I wanted campsites in areas that I can have recreational value with my family. I could have invested with a forester who's gonna cut this if these trees were higher quality, but I'd wanna make sure that the forester grubbed all the stumps and left me nooks where I can have little wooded areas. So they would leave behind the, um, the immature trees that would provide shade and shelter for wildlife and habitat rather than, and I know I'm, knowing, I know I'm picking on my neighbor, but it's pretty much an abandoned property. So, uh, and I, I hope it to be mine one day, uh, but, but I wouldn't cut every tree down. Now, again, that property had more mature trees. So talking with the forester over there, it was more important or more appropriate, but the, the owner didn't give a damn about ecology. They wanted those trees ripped out and a check. They wanted cash in their pocket. And then when we talk about investing about land, we can talk about how that's a value to you, but not necessarily to the forest. But again, I want these nice trees peeking up over the top because I've managed the under forest much better. I want the yield of shelter for the wildlife so that we have bigger, stronger bucks, maybe turkeys out here because uh, these clearings will attract uh, different types of wildlife. And I want, because I have an educational goal of learning how to timber frame, I want poles available. See, it makes no sense to, to cut everything down here than have to go out and buy poles. Because look, there's one, whoa, look at that. There's a pole right in front of me. Holy crap, there's three more over there. Holy crap, there's a couple right here. And of course, with these trees being more in the light, they're gonna, they're gonna open up a lot. Um, they're actually gonna open up and, and grow a little bit faster. But can you see, where I'm coming from here. I know I've gone a little far here. You guys asked for a before and after. I'm showing you a before and after, but let's go one step further into after the after. What is the dividend your land is going to provide you and your family? Now, when a farm hands out here, living on the property, we're gonna have probably a tiny house or two out here, some experimental housing, and the farm hands here just for the season, for a couple months, and they have goats on this property. Now the goat meat is a yield. And I know a lot of you guys are used to, how much does it cost to get a farm hand out here? Uh, you know, I just don't got that much money. Money is not how you get to where you want in life. Sometimes you gotta put in the time. Sometimes you gotta have a plan. And that, sometimes that plan doesn't bring to you what, exactly what you want and you've gotta step into that plan. So there's a timeline. If you stay with what we're teaching you here, if you invest in the education, which doesn't always cost money, always cost time, but doesn't always cost money, you will be in a position to start getting this kind of thing going. Not only will you be able to get this kind of thing going, but as you progress, you're going to have that family experience. You're going to have the money saved on vacations. You're going to have the enjoyment and excitement of learning new things. You're going to be out here with your family, your friends, and you're just going to, you just kind of feel so blessed. And I know, you know, a blessing, it was only, uh, 
in the medieval times where blessings cost you something. But, you know, there's a, there's a value in knowing that you are moving towards the goals you want. The whole world around you could fall apart, but if you're on a piece of land with a house you own, with all these different yields we're talking about, you know, this is the part of the eight forms of capital. How, how many more skills do you have? How many animals do you have providing products? We put a little chicken coop out here and a fence, a little mobile chicken tractor, and a little fence around the area there. We could be having eggs every week. If we had rabbits out here, for example, moving rabbits through the land, we could be fertilizing the land, you know, whatever the future site of our, um, of our garden area is, we can put rabbits in a hutch, move them through this land, and they will be feeding the land. See, do you see where I'm coming from here? This is different than what you're gonna see in a lot of places that are telling you, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. And in fact, every bad forester you talk with will tell you the only solution is whatever solution they provide. When you talk to a good forester, they're gonna come out here and they're more of a naturalist. They're looking at this land and their yield, what is the yield on the land over time? And they're willing to wait 30 years for the trees to be mature. Folks, this is something you can do. This is something that we can help you with, the planning, the, the everything. And, and what if you get a plan together and it's not, you know, it costs too much. Well, then at least you know now before you're all the way in it. And, and to be frank, basically, there's a lot of folks out there that get into a homestead or get into a small farm and then they fail and they can't pay for it. And then investors and, and other people who know how to transform land into highest utility value, they come along and buy that land for pennies on the dollar. See, they buy that land at a discount. They come in and do something like this. You buy a piece of land like this. You come in here. Now, I'm not going to do this, but, but I could Airbnb this baby. I could put in some cabins if there was some water service and stuff. Um, I could put in cabins. I could have some campsites out here. I could be getting 50 bucks a night with folks out here. Now, again, that has a whole different set of maintenance to it. It's just not buy a piece of land, clear it off, and put some, put some cabins on it. Um, but do you see where I'm coming from here? Your options are unlimited, so you want to get them down on paper to choose in the order of priority the things you want to do. Then you step into those objectives. So before trees I can't, you know, woods that I can't get through, woods that are difficult to extract, the poles that I need to learn timber framing, and now I have woods that are easily accessible because I created so many edges on the forest and in the permaculture uh, methods. Those edges are, are full of abundance. Second, I want to create the open spaces for access because if I cut down a bunch of poles and I clean them all up, I got to move them somewhere. And then finally, as far as the life and, and experiential value of this type of thing, I want to be out, come out here and camp. I want to chill out. I want to relax. You guys hear how high strung I am sometimes. I get excited about the topics, but again, sometimes I just sit out here and listen to the birds. Sometimes I just walk through the land. Again, these methods are unusual because they feel like you're going too slow. But nature is not an instant, microwavable, every second does exactly what you want. When you work with nature, you feed the land, you cultivate the land, you conserve the land, and it will produce abundance for your family and for generations to come. I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead. I hope to see you in the next video. If you have detailed questions, visit www.prosperityhomestead.org. Join our newsletter. Go to the contact page and ask your questions. There's a number of resources there, a paid membership site. You know, we have members to get more details than I give you guys on YouTube. Um, but again, if you can just ask in the, in the comments, that's a step towards the desires and dreams you want. In fact, in the comments below, I want you to proclaim, I want you to put it out there, what's your next three-year goal? Where do you want to be in the next three years? Do you want a small farm, homestead, or an estate? Do you want to have more use out of land? Maybe you own some land out of state 
and you haven't even visited that land, but you've been dreaming about hunting on it, you've been dreaming about camping on it, tell me your story. I'd love to hear from you. Again, I'll see you in the next video. I'm Justin Hit with Prosperity Homestead, and this has been a before and an after of forest mulching.